Yeah, so a uh, very good evening to everyone. Yeah, Professor, are you able to hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Yeah, very good evening to you and very good evening to participants. So, uh, hello, everyone. I welcome you all to this invited lecture today. We are having uh, with Professor Shawa Han from uh, School of Art and Design, Wuhan University of uh, Technology from China. So this uh, invited lecture is being arranged under the course what we have uh, in our institute, Strategies for Sustainable Design. The title of uh, his invited lecture today is Sustainable Design Thinking, Research Reflections and Teaching Cases. So I will briefly introduce him. Uh, Professor Shongwa Han, he's a, a PhD in design from 2016 from WUT and uh, Polymy combined. He is currently associate professor and postgraduate supervisor in School of Art and Design, Wuhan University of Technology, China. He focuses on promoting service transformation and experience innovation for commercial companies in the context of sustainable development. As the director of Lens Lab WU2, he led the research team to preside over the projects from China Ministry of Education, China Ministry of Science and Technology, Hubei Provincial Social Sciences, Hubei Provincial Teaching Research and other national ministries and commissions. Regarded as the excellent professor of WUT, he is giving lectures on China MOOC on system design for sustainability. Dozens of articles uh, in uh, journals and conferences he has already published. He has uh, two monographs and one national planning teaching textbook also he has published. Due to his long-term cooperation and exchange with LENS, like, that is a learning network of sustainability, and uh, I myself also is a part of you know, that uh, consortium, which is an international consortium. So he's being invited to serve, uh, uh, he, he was invited to serve as the review expert of international conference Lens 2016 to 20 and branch academic chair of 2019 session. Uh, also, he has been the host and co-chair of uh, 2015 and 2020 Lens China annual meeting also. Based on the teaching and research results, he developed copyleft online sustainable design toolkits, service design co-creation platforms, and pr product experience design framework also, which, is, which can be very useful for uh, you as a designer. With the design company he founded, he has completed more than 10 design projects from CSSC, CRRC, Dongfeng Motor, GAC Motor, Huawei, Hire Group, and other leading enterprises in China. So we'll be uh, hearing more from Professor. Uh, First, we will go through uh, his presentation and uh, towards the end, we will go for uh, uh, question answer session. So uh, if you have any questions, you may ask in the last. So I'll just uh, pass it on this uh, post thing uh, to you, Professor. Okay, thank you. Uh... So to briefly uh, inform you, uh, these students who are uh, who have joined uh, this uh, invited lecture uh, right now, they are uh, the students from our Department of Design, and uh, they are currently like uh, doing masters and some students from undergraduate also, some from research also, PhD level also. Since uh, we have this sustainability courses uh, going on right now also in our department, our masters first year students are taking it. So uh, this lecture was organized as part of you know that course and. Uh, I'm sure like it will be helpful for uh, all of them. Okay. Yeah, able to uh, see the share button? Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah, it's visible. Why uh, Hello? Yeah, it's visible full screen. Okay. Okay, hello, my India friends. It's really great chance and pleasure to have this time to share with you in the coming evening. And uh, it's really a pity that we can't to meet in a physical meeting, but I think we got a chance later. Because in the past times, we have a very cooperation with the Professor Shivaji. And thank you very much for making this platform. Ah, boy. Thank you very much first for the uh, invitation. I'm so uh, glad to uh, have this chance to uh, study and uh, communicate with the India 
students and professors. It's really an honor for me. And uh, today my topic is sustainable design thinking, viewpoints and uh, practices. Maybe firstly, I need to uh, very briefly introduce to myself. Uh, I'm now, the main title of myself now is the founder and the executive director of Men's Lab WT. I think it's as the same as uh, Professor Shuaji did in uh, IIT. Uh, say. And then uh, I'm just, uh, from the School of Art and Design, and uh, which is uh, also the Department of Industrial Design. So my major is mainly about industrial design. And then when I uh, go to the PhD, I'm more focused on the sustainable design. And uh, in the practice and the teaching uh, now, I'm more focused on the product service system design. So that's the, uh, let's go. Uh, it's okay. okay. Is it okay now? The slides work now, okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, today, uh, uh, depends on the uh, discussions with uh, Professor Shuaji. Uh, I will share my opinions about why, what, and how about sustainable design thinking and the practice in China. So let's go to the first part. Why is innovation design uh, I think uh, from this paper, you can get uh, some ideas because you can say uh, nights and all the activities of our uh, daily life uh, was uh, supported by the, let's say, by the energy. But now there are 82% of the total primary energy supply comes from fossil. But there are 1.5 billion people lacking modern energy access. So that's the thing that uh, uh, shocked me and uh, what our what us as designers need to to do uh, to solve such of these kind of problems, and then there is another picture that shows the uh, glacier uh, gradually uh, melting. This is the area changes of the uh, glacier sky uh, restore in Bolivia from 1940 to 2005. You can see the area changes from there's a 0.22 kilometers to uh, most of nothing. It's really pity. And then we can also say that from 2019 to now, the COVID 19 is really, really a crisis for all the human kinds. And I think the, the crisis is increasing poverty in the inequalities. At a global scale, especially the, uh, I think, especially the the area or the country where the COVID nineteen was not very good controlled. So uh, from the UN, uh, there are some some things I think we can maybe uh, make a note that uh, everything we do during and after the COVID nineteen crisis must be with a strong focus on building more eco inclusive and sustainable economics and the societies, more resilient in the face of pandemics, climate changes, and all other sustainable development goals. I think that's, that's something that shows what we did today uh, was very valuable. And another uh, data I want to share too. This, uh, this data comes from the Overshoot Day OIG. That, the, the shows that the Earth overshoot day from 1969 to 2018. That means uh, uh, we need more and more energies and more and more things from the Earth to make us live. So that's very terrible, we can say, because you can see from maybe from 1970, we, we are getting or we are getting more things, over things or from the earth, I think. And uh, this has happened uh, even uh, in China and also in India, I think, uh, especially in, let's say, in uh, uh, some, some countries that uh, are developed. So uh, maybe we can make something more clear that from about 1970 
on those human demands uh, on nature began to uh, trans transcend the taping point of ecology. Transfer the past few decades, to say almost every 10 years, the arrivals of this day comes a month earlier. But the least of the global population, about 1.6 years of size and ecological resources, are currently needed. And if we continue to develop according to the current trend, we will have two Earths after 2030. So 2030 is a, is, a, is a key time, let's say, and uh, we need to do many, many things before this time. And there's another picture that's why really sad for me, because you can see uh, this is the, let's say it's a kind of daily life or life, lifestyle of Chinese that we buy things from internet by our ape, not from the face-to-face -face ways. So you can see this is the 2020. Uh, there's a day, uh, the 11th of the, um, 11th, 2011, let's say, because uh, this day, uh, all the uh, online shops uh, try their best things to the people. You can see that in 2020, uh, we got 74.1p, yes. Uh, base volume. It's really a terrible thing because this kind of thing is that shows that the local shoppers, they don't got any business uh, to do, right? I think these things maybe uh, also happened in India too, because India was another great market to uh, have the smartphones. And the smartphone is the basic to do this kind of online shopping, online business. But uh, there's another thing that by 2050, production and the consumption systems in industrialized countries should be should use 90% um, less resources than they are doing today, taking consideration the equity principle. I said in 1993. But uh, the things not happened so as what what she what he wait, wished. And uh, there's another great professor in China. Uh, he is the founder, let's say, or the, uh, the biggest or the greatest uh, professor in, in industry in China. He said in 2013 that the China, let's say, we have industry in China, but we are not industrialized. That's the thing in 2013. And uh, you can say that from that day, we are working hard on industrialized, but the same is that uh, means that the situation goes better. Uh, let's say another example. This thing shows that the long proportional relationship between technological development and uh, and uh, energy consumption in uh, automotive industry is mainly about uh, the EU countries. We can say that uh, let's say from the the left, we can say the green, the the real GDP was uh, growing uh, from 1990 to 2005, and uh, the total energy consumption was also uh, was up. But we can say that the there's another thing, the the from the the total com. So we can from we can see things from this that the GDP. Uh, was uh, along with, let's say, up along with the total energy consumption. But let's see the, the picture in the right, right part. Even the, the total car, uh, let's say, the, uh, have traveled uh, long and long distances, and the, it's, it's the same kind of uh, trend with the GDP, and it's also the same kind of trend with the total fuel consumption by private car. But there's another thing we need to know that at this time, the average fuel consumption per car would go down and down. So that's another thing that the technology development for the consumption per car is higher and higher, let's say, because uh, now we got very great uh, technologies to, uh, to uh, down, let's say down, to make it down of the average fuel consumption. But 
totally or the concept uh, or totally we can say even each car or average car was down, but totally the market we consumed the consumption of the fuel was also or still up and up. So this comes another opening that can we meet the sustainability challenge by improving only products and the production processes? The answer is no. And we also can see from the, uh, the, the case uh, of the car fuel consumption of the EU countries. So uh, that's another thing that, uh, or that's another thing that uh, the reducing and sustainability will allow to create sustainability. That's, that's something we need to uh, keep a point or to, to, to remind ourselves uh, day by day, I think. So are all distributed economies sustainable? No, definitely no. Definitely no, because uh, maybe India or even uh, in China there are uh, shared uh, bicycle. I think in India there are also many many sharing business model things like a sharing bicycle, uh, sharing uh, umbrellas, sharing cars, even sharing horses. Everything in China uh, they, they want to make this kind of business sharing business, but. In China now, it's already happened that the sharing bicycle uh, was making people convenient at the big, at the, in the beginning. But now, uh, there are too many sharing bicycles in the cities, even in the villages. So this kind of sharing bicycle uh, surplus becomes garbage. So that's the thing that uh, provokes that the, not all the distributed economy is sustainable. So uh, let's come to the second part. What is innovation for sustainability and uh, service design thinking? I think uh, from Professor Shuaj in, in his course, he definitely, or I think he uh, will uh, show this kind of uh, saying to the students that uh, from, comes from the UN report our common future, that the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And then that's the saying about what is sustainable development. And that's also can be saying that don't do things today that makes tomorrow worse. And so let's come to Another uh, knowledge that uh, I think is very important for our uh, students or even the professors like us to involve to uh, learn about sustainability. Uh, it's about the uh, sustainable de development triangle. It's come from Manasin Hall. Um, yeah, I think we, uh, maybe the Indian students would, uh, were, are more familiar with him. And uh, there are three. Uh, let's say three demands or three uh, very important points. Uh, it's economic, social, and environment. But the dimension uh, was the basic uh, framework, let's say. But for us, uh, we need to think about more or think about more. Uh, what, what, is there anything or is there any other dimensions in our own or in our local context like in China, the policy, or in India, the, uh, the policy, or anything others. So we need to think about this because this kind of uh, framework can uh, need or need our uh, design thinking uh, in, uh, when we're doing design, even in our uh, research in period. And another thing is that the, uh, from the PSS innovation, the key difference uh, about the PSS with the traditional sales. So from this, I can, uh, we can say that uh, for the PSS, it's a different way, right? It's a different way. It, uh, it's mainly to have the product service mix the capable of fulfilling a demand for satisfaction. So, the satisfaction, this word is very important 
for us to understand or even to do sustainable product service system design, right? But in, in, we, also, we, we, we also need to um, think about the priority, yeah? When changing, what is the main part should we start from? The, prov the providers or the customers, right? Because when we are doing a business model innovation, maybe sometimes we, we're thinking from the customer side, side, sometimes we are thinking from the uh, provider side. And then we comes to another uh, picture, let's say. That's also, uh, for me, in my class, in my research is also very uh, basic and very important because uh, we need to know the evaluation of the rule of the design for sustainability. Uh, even let's say there are four kind of uh, sustainable design, or we can say there are four directions of sustainable design. At first, maybe at first, or when we are poor, or we are not so developed areas, maybe we start from the low impact match or energy part. Let's say maybe you can say in China, uh, we did uh, uh, product designs with bamboos, which is very cheap, even we don't need to pay any money for that. So that's the first uh, direction, let's say. And then we comes to the product life circle design because we need to uh, uh, wide, wide the, the, the design, not only the product, we need to uh, design a product, product uh, let's say the material uh, selection, the product, uh, producing and uh, even the product uh, uh, transferring or something like this. And then this is for the industrial, uh, let's say the industrial the countries or the countries who produce products more. They need to think about this kind of PSS more. And then we comes to the, the main part for me is the system design for eco uh, efficiency. That means that uh, Mostly we did product service system in the third part, the, the yellow part in the slide. Because uh, from that, from this part, we start to put some service in the system. Because in the, set, in the first two parts, we just have product to solve the problems. But from the third part, we combine the service with the product to make a system solution. And then the last way or last direction for our sustainable designers is designed for social equity and uh, cohesion. And that's, uh, where, uh, I think this kind of design in China now is more nice about the social design, social innovation. Uh, it's mainly happened to help the people from the city and from the village to have a very good balance and a good communication. I think uh, so. From the, the four directions or four kinds of the uh, design for sustainability, we can say that, or we can uh, find our um, direction and find our goals about our design. So that's the, uh, I think that's this kind of knowledge was also uh, taught in the class of the Professor Shuan Jin Chu. And then, um, we can say the design is to solve problems creatively. Yeah. And also we know that the sustainable development is the most important issue today. Even it's the most important problem today. So what's the sustainable design? And we got the, the thing from the Tishner 2010. Design for sustainability requires generation, generating solutions that are equally beneficial to the society and the communities around us, especially uh, unprivileged and uh, disadvantaged populations, to the natural environment and to economic system globally, but especially locally. So from this kind of de uh, definition, as I say, we also can say the three dimensions of the sustainable development triangle, if you remember, we mentioned before, the society, 
the environment and the economic system, right? So uh, let's go to the uh, definition of the sustainable per product service system design. So this kind of design is the design of the combination of products and services able to fulfill a customer demand together with the network of stakeholders able to produce and deliver the solution and the business model that makes providers interested um, to continually seek after both environmentally and the social uh, efficiently beneficial new solutions. And, and we also uh, can get the key, key points. Let's say the products, the services, the customer demand, the network of stakeholders and the business model. That shows what we need to focus and what we need to do when we are doing a design, right? So let's come to the second part. Uh, what is innovation for sustainability in the service design thinking? So what, what is this? And let's come to this picture. Uh, I miss this picture. You know, it's Wuhan and we are, we, we don't got this kind of big event for years because of the COVID-19. And this is the sense and the contact points, let's say, or the touch points of the Wuhan Marathon service design. Let's go back a little. So for the Marathon, uh, from the picture of the Marathon, we can say there are two green lines, let's say. What, what is the green line? What is the green line? We can think about it later. What is green line? What's inside the green line and what's outside the green line? Oh, what is the right point two, right? We can say outside the, uh, the, green, the gr green line, there are, let's say, uh, the, the police, the cleaners, the, the TV, uh, the, the broadcasters, uh, even uh, many, many of the, uh, let's say the committees or some, uh, some people like this. And inside of the green lines, there are all the players, let's say, all, all the players in the marathon. So let's come to that picture shows what a service design happened or where the service design happened. Even for us, where the product service system design happened, right? That's also a design for sustainability, let's say. So inside is the client or the customer. The outside, the right ones are the providers, right? So um, then we got uh, some other touch point design that day is 2016 Wuhan Marathon. In that time, we got the short messages and also many, many kinds of uh, handbooks. And this, uh, the, the right part picture shows the different touch points in the marathon. The, the, police, the policemen, the, 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 the people who are watching the, the sport, there the, the, the are the singers and the volunteers, they say, cleaners, and many other people, they say, and also many, many business people who want to involve in this kind of event. So this also the uh, product service system design. And we can also call this a uh, sustainable design, right? Because the sustainable design got four different kinds. The third kind is product service system design, right? So uh, the service design, we can say to from the, uh, separated from the service interface, and um, where there are many, many different kinds of touch points, right? The, the, orange, the orange one, let's say the service interface. In front of the service interface, there are the client, right? There are the client. And behind the service interface, there are the organizations, let's say the providing services who 
uh, providing the services, right? So that's, uh, that's the thing, or that's the picture I loved to show clearly what is the service design. So, uh, but we also need to know that the function of the service designer has also changed from designing or object in the traditional sense, let's say in the product design time, to designing a thing to support and uh, facilitate the dialogue and the innovation and the post prototype testing of these service providers and service users. So in short, service design is a system design of user behavior, service process, and experience in the service sense, or in a, let's say in the service scenarios also. So from this kind of def, uh, definition, uh, def, uh, we can say we need to focus on the user behavior, a uh, service process, and the, the user uh, experiences, right? And then we also, uh, was told that the service design is not a new spe specialist design uh, discipline. It's a new multidisciplinary platform of experts, right? So then we come to uh, focus on uh, what is or how the service happened, right? So in the front, we, we are like, we got the customer and in the back, we got the company. We can also say in the front, we got the client, in the back, we got the providers. So what we are provide or what we are communicated, right? We communicate service, environmentals, communications, products, right? So let's say uh, let's, the st stakeholders are involved more and more people. Uh, maybe a group of all participations, including content creators, service spread providers, and uh, let's say the end, the customers, and the customers. So uh, all this kind of communication, we can separate them into three parts or three kinds of the touch point. Like, uh, the hardware, the software, the humanware, right? I think that's a normal thing for you, for the IT students to know this, right? You, you, you must already know this. So it's also be told that as the physical touch point, a digital touch point and the emotional touch point. But for today, uh, I want to say that there are two key nodes of the service design. The first is the design. The service itself, including the process and the steps of the service, right? We need to design the service itself. And then we need to make some uh, guidance, guidance, because we need to guide the human behavior in the service process. So that's one fact that will seriously affect the service experience. It's the people, it's the people who are involved in our service because services are generally delivered by people, right? Not just the service process, because the people transform our service, right? So uh, we can see that why we, we said the one fact is the people, because we can think about that, that uh, sometimes the defect of the service process can be supplemented by the intelligence design of people because people are a smart, very smart, right? So sometimes people can uh, use a smart thinking to uh, supplement the defects of the service process. But uh, at the other times, or on the other hand, because people, let's say the person, the people, the human are unreliable, then the processes and the systems need to be used to limit 
and uh, standards people's behavior. That means that uh, we, we can't uh, let the people in our system do anything they want to do. They need to do things in a handbook we give them, right? Uh, that's what I, I think about the people uh, or the design, the second, second kind of attachment, the emotional attachment is really, really uh, important in the service design. So then we come to the end to, to think about it. If we want to design the product, what, what, what we can do to make a good product design, definitely uh, you are the best students, design students in India, even the best technologists in India. So you, you must know you will start from the observe the user behaviors, right? From this period, we may do the user research. We got the uh, extract user scenarios and the problems. Then we find the user, what, what's the uh, pain point or what's the problems and the, what, when the problems happened for the users, that's the first thing we can do. Then we can also design the corresponding service process to solve the problem. So we are now very familiar or good at design to make a good product design. But what can we do about the people? About the people, what's the solution, right? So we can now, now we can say the thing happened in India, in China, in Europe, in America, that we got uh, the AI things. The, the AI sound speakers, the AI teachers, the AR nurses, the AI waiters, everything like this. Yes, that's the one solution we can say from the thing we did when the touch point is the people. And also we can do maybe the standard training, but what else, what, what's else, right? That's what we need to think to more and more. Because from now, for the three kind of the uh, touch points, we need to design a service design. For the fit hardware, we are okay. You, we are very good at the hardware design. For the software, we, the India are more good at the software design too. And, but for the humanware, let's say, the emotional touch point, that's more important, right? I got to the, the top, uh, let's say I got the top uh, cell phone, I got the top software inside the cell phone, but I got a very bad sellers of the cell phone. So I think I will never buy this brand of cell phone, right? So the sellers as one of the emotional touch points of the system, it's also very important. So for uh, what we can do about the sellers, maybe AI, maybe standard training, or maybe some other smarter uh, solutions. Yeah, it depends on you guys. So uh, then we go to the, the third part, uh, how to innovations, do the innovations for sustainability. So, so uh, we, we got, uh, oh, sorry, it's okay. Uh, so we got, uh, uh, there are many, many design thinking process uh, from the, uh, inspirations to adhesion to implementation or from discover concept uh, design or do a many many things like this but we can say that uh, mostly we start from discover right then the last last part is mostly about the implement so from the Stanford University they got a design thinking process from the emphasize to define, to uh, identify, to prototype, to test. And then from the IDEO, the forming center design process from inspiration to addition and to implementation. And uh, I think the uh, most famous ones from the British Design Council, the W uh, diamond model, right? That's a very simple, but a very useful uh, model. It's from the it's from the uh, discover, define, 
and developer and deliver, I think most of the students in design school doing things or so things in this way, right? From the problem to a solution, that's great. And there's a more uh, developed one, right? But this from this one, we need to know that from A point or from the start point, uh, we need to uh, find uh, could be, we don't know what it could be or what the solution could be or what the problems uh, should be. Uh, so uh, what, 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 what's, what's the problem could be solved, right? But from after the four um, steps, we finally got the solution and then we know there's one solution or one system should be this one, which can solve the problem we find in the first pass, right? That's a great uh, framework. And there are also some, uh, some other uh, research in, in China, uh, maybe from the first part to the discovery part. I'm sorry, these are uh, in Chinese, I'm sorry. And I, I will express a little, right? For the first part of the discover, you need to know who's the customer, what they need and how they are served, right? And for the second part to define, you need to know what's the, the gap or what's the weakness of your service and what's the key touch points of your service you need to do or you need to define in this part. And then comes to the development part, develop part, you need to develop with your customer or with the other stakeholders and make you put type things and then uh, find some new ideas. Then at the last part, the deliver part, you need to make a great solution, right? And to implement it. So uh, that's the way we do design or we do uh, service design or we do sustainable service design or we do service uh, sustainable design thinking, right? So design thinking stresses the lead to rapidly prototype the solution so that the designers can get feedbacks as quickly as possible. So that's a, uh, another very, very important word that we need to do uh, prototype, right? Even to make a short, uh, or to make a video, to take a pictures, even to make some actions, even to talk the real customers, right? We, we need to do a prototype. We do, we're not just talking. We're not, we, we are not just doing design with our computer. We're doing design with our legs to walking on, to, on, on the street. So another thing that the design thinking is also a user-centered approach. That's very important, a user-centered approach. Maybe for the companies, they said a customer-centered approach. But for us, we, we just need to uh, keep the user-centered approach in our mind, right? So, but all these kind of thing in my mind or from my experience with my students or with my customers that uh, I found that there is no one size fits all design thinking method. So even um, after today, after this evening's lecturing from my uh, not so good uh, presentation, you got some kind of the design thinking method, but maybe some of this are fit you well, but some of this are not so good to fit you, right? So what's the, how can we to do the service design? Where can we to make the brick souls, right? There are two, two ways uh, um, which are very good, uh, um, how to say, this, which are used by my students in my lectures, uh, in my classes. Firstly, we need to uh, make in the value proposition design. And then we need to make in the service uh, senses design. So uh, we go to the, 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 the second part of the past three and the main PSSD tools. I think from the because uh, the, I'm coming from the Wuhan University of Technology from Wuhan, China. So we are the same as the, as the IIT because we are all in the lens uh, system map, right? Or the, all, all, sorry, all the lens system. So for, from the lens system, 
uh, from Angela, uh, let's say, and the supervision of the Professor Carlo Vizzoni from Politecnico di Milano. Uh, he and his team developed many uh, PSSD tools, and which is the main ones in this world. Like the, uh, we can see from these pictures, like the system map, the offering uh, diagram, the interaction tip. Uh, that's very important for us. We use it very, uh, very, I say, very common or very, uh, very often. And also some um, some other kind of the uh, tools from the polymer, let's say, the polymer system. Uh, but uh, uh, from my lab, the lens lab, WT, uh, which you uh, are um, from my university, I did um, uh, a little bit development of the toolkit of the uh, PSSD, but it's really, really a, uh, a little pity that uh, we didn't got the English version. Uh, so I think maybe last time uh, I can make an English version and then share uh, to uh, Professor Shiraji and the, the lovely students there, right? And but this all kind of uh, tools, uh, I think mostly you you have seen or you have seen before, like the sorry, like the COCD boxes, COCD box, the system uh, map and the, the SWOT or the personas, right? And uh, we got also uh, got the, uh, the blueprints, the user journey maps, uh, the um, business model canvas or something. So from our um, perspective, we develop the sustainable service system design tools and then we got the, the uh, a big one. We choose what the customers uh, was serviced by the providers. That's a bigger one, let's say, or, or advanced one of the uh, service blueprint. So uh, we use it in uh, in our uh, classes uh, from let's say from two thousand seventeen to until now. So every year I got two courses, three courses, two courses for the bachelors, which is the sustainable design and the advanced design. And another course is for the masters, is the service system design. And this course, the service system design course, uh, we invite uh, Professor Shivaji and the students from IT who are interested to come uh, with us to join the course in, I think it's in, uh, in eight weeks uh, um, from now on, eight weeks from now on. So we did a lot of, uh, let's say, prototype of this kind of tools. And uh, I think it's really, really uh, helps and it benefits the students, especially the beginners to understand what is a sustainable, what is a sustainable design? What is service design? What is the connections between service design and the uh, sustainable design? Um, that's the that's the way they use. I show some examples. Yes, yeah, we, we did some. You can see from the the, the right part, they need it, they need to make it in in a handwriting way to to use the tool, and then. They need to make it uh, make it uh, in a digital version, and that's also another example. So uh, we come to through the last part. I'm sorry, it's a bit uh, a little bit long because uh, my English is not so good. So I need, I'm trying to say uh, slower and slower. Uh, sorry. Okay, there's some examples uh, of my students design about the sustainable uh, service system, product service system. And this design, I'm also very sorry about this. It's not in English, but we got a video in English, okay? So i make a very briefly introduction of the project. Uh, the name of the project of this um, uh, solution is the Care Plus design. 
we, they call this uh, care plus. It's mainly for people um, who are in the area of the, let's say the COVID-19 and they make some testing or, or they need to know where the, the people who are dangerous, let's say something like this. So we got the, uh, the let's see, okay. This is the offline touch points. We make some uh, rooms, let's say, or we, uh, we make some physical touch points, physical touch points, uh, product designs. This is the this is this part, and then we make some online touch point design. We make uh, applications which can uh, tell people what you need to do, where you need to go, where you need to make the test. That's something like this. And for the process uh, of the design, uh, we need the students to uh, make the cast uh, the system map very very clearly. Uh, you might. In my um, opinion, if we got eight weeks to do this kind of project, we need to uh, do the system map at least two weeks, at least two weeks. And then we, from the, because from the system map, we can um, know or classify all the mainly stakeholders and the interactions between the stakeholders, right? Then from the interactions we got or we designed, we finally got the uh, value proposition. That's also the most important thing of our business model, right? Then uh, they need to uh, design the, the processing, how to use the, uh, how to use the touch point designs, let's say. And then, uh, then we also need the students to uh, make the service blueprint. I seen the left part, the service blueprint. You need to um, make it very clear that how the service would um, interaction between the providers and the clients, let's say, right? That's very, that's very important to make this service blueprint. Then we also make the service journey map uh, for the online part and the offline part, let's say, and also the business model canvas. So uh, that's another picture about the physical touch point design. Uh, that's a really, really simple design, but I think it's clearly uh, choose what we, are, what we wanted from the physical part, physical part what the physical parts uh, can meet the needs of the clients. And, okay. Uh, uh, I will share another example. It's, it's also a three minutes video to show what we are designing about uh, uh, product service system design of the City noise, uh, city noise pollution, I say. So, okay. yeah, no worries, person. Yeah, please, please. Okay, you can say this. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you. it's audible, visible. Yeah. Do you know how big is the harm of noise? Noise of long term exposure to the city not only may cause permanent hearing loss may also increase your risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, and obesity. The data showed that the proportion of noise pollution complaints increased year by year to 12,369, with construction complaints accounting for 45.4%, followed by industrial noise, living noise. The noise pollution complaints is still increasing year by year. It is difficult to see better. Noise pollution is a complex social problem involving many stakeholders. Only from a particular stakeholder is difficult to solve the problem. In order to improve the sound pollution in cities, we designed this urban sound environmental protection service system, which is composed of citizen-oriented noise. The hardware is installed on poles or street lights by a specialist assigned by a government department, placed in the main noise source areas of a city, and the data collected are transmitted 
different from hardware, you can collect urban noise by using app, which is characterized by richer distributed data collection. Data collected by hardware and software. Users can view the sound environment map of mobile phone location through the home page of the app, and the user contribution points can be displayed in the enlarged map. Users can use the app to record the noise at any time and anywhere to display the decibel value of the noise synchronously. After recording, they can upload the content noise, on-site photos, and mark the recording location. More and more people are involved in the sound recording, noise map will become more and more rich. It will provide refined, institutionalized, and standardized decision-making help for urban noise management, making our homes more environmentally friendly. Uh, I think that's all. I really, really uh, thank for all the um, professors and the students uh, to uh, listening to this uh, presentation. Uh, maybe next time we are more familiar and we are more communicated uh, in our project. Uh, communicate to, uh, maybe my skill was better and better and uh, the, the effects of this will be good, right? So thank you so much. And uh, I really, really welcome you to uh, join our research and join our team or join our network. We, I'm so pleased that we got more chances to do more things, do more designs, to help the people of India, the people of China, and the people of all over uh, to live in a more sustainable way, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, thank you uh, for the wonderful lecture, uh, Professor. I think uh, we got to learn a number of things from, you know, academic area, research area, and, you know, the projects, student projects, etc. So it's very interesting. I would open, uh, you know, the floor for uh, questions, you know, from our students. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, everyone is now welcome to, you know, put up their questions to the professors. And uh, yeah, meanwhile, uh, I would like uh, uh, knowing a little bit on uh, this thing, Professor, like uh, uh, sustainability, if you see, is a, a concept which kind of, you know, is uh, touching all our lives, you know, everyone's life and you know, every human's life. But there is no direct, you know, uh, repercussion to each one of us unless somebody falls into, you know, like uh, some uh, disaster kind of situation, like natural disasters, etc., things like that. So then that's a direct, you know, touch of like a maybe climate change, you know, based impacts, you know, somebody encounters. So that's the first hand experience. But usually it doesn't, you know, happen that way. And uh, that is resulting into not, you know, taking this thing as, you know, like a serious matter. Okay. For dealing, you know, for the, you know, public, you know, like a people's, you know, participation to deal with, you know, this uh, crisis, right? So what do you propose, you know, should be the way for, uh, you know, like a going ahead? Uh, sorry, would you please still make it uh, the question, the final question, more simply? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry of me. <laughs> so the, the question, uh, I want to understand, like, uh, if you can propose, you know, some way where like a generic, you know, like a general, you know, like a public, like, you know, uh, who are not directly, maybe like, you know, like a, they do not have exposure to research or those things a general, general, you know, like a person from the society, how they can contribute to the environment? You mean the, sorry, I, I don't got your idea, but. Uh, <laughs> um, Shall I type it in here? Shall okay. I type the question? Yes, okay. okay. Yeah, let's the question. Uh, it's, it's my problem, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, you can just pass the, yes, I got it. How a yeah. general person can contribute towards sustainability. Uh, that's really uh, great. I think it's a good question because, uh, you know, um, when we are doing our uh, lecturing, the students usually in the beginning of the course, they got many, many kind of issues want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the issues they think they can solve it from, from their, uh, let's say, from their, their power. But some of the uh, things or the problems uh, cannot be solved by the general person, let's say, uh, cannot be solved from the bottom to the up, let's say. And uh, so uh, you can say in our uh, projects, we are in the, in the system design uh, solutions, we, we usually have one 
stakeholders from the uh, government. So because the sustainability things are mostly are not uh, so easy to solve, we need the power of the government. We need them to help us to make some policies, let's say, or to make some rules uh, to, to meet the people to do or to involve in the, in the system. So that's the thing. Uh, uh, from my perspective, for students, I will suggest them to uh, not to, um, let's say, not to uh, avoid to have the government inside your system, right? You need, uh, on the other hand, you need to embrace the system or the powerful uh, part or, or the powerful stakeholders. Maybe the, uh, embracing your professors, embracing your universities, even embracing the leaders of the NGOs in your community, right? They got some kind of power to help you to uh, contribute, let's say contribute towards sustainability issues. That's the first thing for the students. Uh, also, for us, uh, I will talk a little bit more, okay? For us, uh, I'm a young professor in China, uh, maybe we are the same age, um, but uh, I got uh, some projects supported by the, um, let's say the Chinese Ministry of Education and the Chinese Ministry of the Science, because they want us to do some research to help them to make some good things to do sustainable designs. Mm -hmm. So I think for the professors, we also can uh, make our own contributions in this, uh, in this issue, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know this, uh, I don't know if this is a good, good answer, but uh, uh, as I, I, I think if you are more invited with us, you can know uh, what we are doing in this uh, question, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, I think students can post their uh, queries here in the chat box. Yeah, we have one uh, query from our, you know, one of the you know, our colleagues. He's asking, do you encourage, uh, you can check the chat box. Okay, he, uh, fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the encourage will bring a stakeholder from government in China. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the first, uh, the first uh, example we shoot in the, uh, in the presentation, uh, in the beginning, it's just a, a case or a solution or, or a course design uh, from our course. But then we put to the, uh, there's a computation uh, hosted by the central government. And then some can, uh, let's say some people, uh, big powerful people saw our design and uh, he once told us, uh, Maybe uh, he will promote this solution to Rio because you know Wuhan, uh, it got very damaged at that time. Uh, so this kind of thing, this kind of solutions could be part of the uh, interest of the uh, government stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, my, in my teaching time or in my teaching period, I, I, I do encourage students to uh, let's say bring stakeholders from government. Uh, I think uh, um, mostly what we did uh, in sustainable service system design is kind of social innovation. It couldn't be uh, completed by only designers or only producers, even uh, some other can some other stakeholders from the bottom side. We we need to. Uh, encourage people from the up, the, let's say the, the upside to involve in the system. So yes, I do encourage people, encourage st stakeholders from the uh, government to in, enjoy or to involve the, in, in uh, our students' uh, projects. I, I don't know if it's okay for Sawa, Sawri, or thanks for yeah, your question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yes, sir. I think that's a, uh, an apt answer because uh, sustainability is a, a wholesome, you know, issue. It I think it uh, it catches, you know, everyone, every you know entity on this planet, you know, society, you know, governments, you know, public policy, like, all of those things, like a flora fauna. Well, sustainability is such a you know, subject which doesn't have any like you know exclusion. It, it exclusion, you know, it covers you know almost anything and everything. Okay, 
if we see you know like uh, un sdgs you know for example you know from united nations okay so they are also you know their mandate their target is to cover you know as much as you know things as possible you know they have covered you know like a, a fresh you know like water fresh you know air you know fresh soil you know they talked about you know like a biodiversity of you know both kinds like a flora and fauna you know like a human habitation right humans you know like a city you know living how the human you know like india and china i think uh, at this stage you know they are one you know like there are two such countries who are the you know most populous and they are evolving i think in the in, uh, in the upcoming uh, like you know decades they are going to kind of lead in terms of science and technology and you know even number of like you know it's like you know people it's citizens right consumption overall consumption of you know like resources and energy and everything is going to like you know multiply like a many fold so in these you know scenarios i think it becomes you know very important for the east two countries to work you know towards you know that goal larger goal of sustainability so yeah i would welcome uh, more questions from the students please go ahead and uh, put up your questions here in the chat box okay i got the question from lan Nandini, 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 Do Do Kenny. Ah, uh, how can we balance freedom of individual action with the lead to uh, sustain our environment? Ah, uh, I think there are some principles uh, uh, from my side. Ah, uh, firstly, we can't uh, let's say force, or we can't uh, ask somebody to do do anything. In our solutions, right? We need we can't force them to do anything. We need to specify. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, in the sustainable design, uh, sustainable uh, per product services design. Sorry, uh, there is one thing that we need to use the power of the business, right, Professor Schwartz? We need to use the power of business to uh, promote the stakeholders to. Do something because because uh, they believe that if they choose to do things in this way, they will use less money to gain more. Hmm. So that's the that's the thing. That's the same thing. So um, in short, firstly, we can't force anyone to do anything. We need to uh, make some good design of the business model or of the system to lead people to gain what they want and the. We just want. We just need to uh, design the directions which are uh, lead to a sustainable direction, right? So we can't force people to, uh, let's say, we can't force the individuals to sacrifice their freedom to uh, involve our system, something like this. But uh, um, uh, in fact, uh, that's a really really interesting um, question because um, to sustain or to make the Ever meant to more more good or more, let's say more sustainable. It's a really really big issue in China, because you know in the past uh, maybe twenty years thirty years, uh, we sacrificed a lot of our environmental things to make the industrial thing, right? Mm -hmm. But now the things come back. The 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 government found that they need to do something. To help people to live in a good environment, so in this action, I will I I, I want to say that is, uh, I think the China Chinese government is really smart in this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't uh, let's say force the people to uh, don't use this or don't use that. No, they don't. They just uh, give the money or give the project to the village, to your country, uh, to your city, or to the. Uh, to your village, that uh, the village can build something like this or build something like that to make the environment uh, better and better. Mm -hmm. I also find uh, some um, similar uh, actions in India, uh, the the government to make the some co constructions, let's say, to help yeah. the farmers, to help the uh, the city live, uh, citizens to live a better environment. I think that's really a good way because. Mm -hmm. Uh, the environmental things, yes, it's really also another big issue. Mm. It can't be uh, solved by our individual people. The individual mm. people only be a uh, could. Uh, you, uh, the, I think the for us it, the individuals could do is to uh, to find the right way to 
to follow the let's say follow the policy or even encourage the policy to uh, towards a good direction. So for the balance, I think it's an art. Maybe we need we professors we uh, designers need to do more thinking on the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we, we will see. And I do believe the, the Indian and the Chinese people are really, really good at balance, right? Mm -hmm. So we can do very good in this thing. Mm -hmm. I think a similar kind of approach uh, is happening in India also. It's like, you know, decentralization of, you know, uh, these small scale projects. So a uh, few decades back, you know, government uh, launched Panchayati Raj, you know, system. Well, that's a, uh, you can call it a, like we have, you know, this uh, distributed economic model. So on lines to that, this effort is like a distributed, you know, public administration model. Yes. So as you mentioned, like a, for, you know, local level, you know, infrastructure and uh, like facilities in the like rural areas and villages and towns, you know, the rural, you know, administrative authorities and the people that themselves were kind of, you know, given monetary, you know, authorities to propose and, you know, execute the projects. Well, there are, you know, uh, wonderful results, you know, from several states, you know, from India, uh, as far as, you know, this, uh, uh, thing is concerned. So yes, I think sustainability is very much uh, linked to the you know welfare of you know like a people, society, and social sustainability itself is another like major you know aspect of the overall concept. So how this can be achieved because everyone should be you know part of the all growth and development model. So yeah, if there is any more questions from anyone, uh, I will share my email uh, in the. In the books, in the checkbooks, yeah. or oh, is this a question? Yeah, we have got a few questions, Professor. You can uh, check the chat box. Okay, I'll find that. Uh, yes, I got one. Yeah. Because we don't use Zoom so much, we got a, a ape from Tencent from WeChat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, really great. Yeah, that's, that's the thing we are discussed. Uh, it's from the Ankur Saxena, is a professor or? Yeah, Ankur Saxena is our uh, master student. Okay, uh, hello, thank you. This, you, you are really, uh, this is really a last uh, question uh, because in China, we are also discussing about this thing that, uh, uh, yes, uh, how, how we are thinking about the because there are many many problems are designed by us, mm. not not by the other kind of human, just by the designers, right? Mm. So um, yes, uh, in my opinion, uh, that's why we need to study. That's why we need to learn about the sustainable design, because uh, if we learned what is sustainable design and how to make a sustainable design and we can do design not uh, so and sustainable, right? So yes, it's, it's a terrible thing. It's also very sad to say that there are many, many designers, even many, many, uh, let's say the big men, they, they, they make their designs uh, not need to sustainable. But for us, uh, my suggestion is to uh, put our side inside our heart and uh, uh, make, each in, shift it into the power to study. Because when we got the ability, we can make the solution. If we don't got the ability, we can't make the solution. If we can't make the solution, the anger is nothing. That's my opinion. So I really, really appreciate your question. And I got, I put my, um, I put my email uh, in the in the in the in, in the books, if you want to uh, communicate, you can just write mail to me and also any other questions. And another question is that I had was, how long can a growth-based economy remain sustainable? I'm sorry. Uh, this one. How yeah. Long? How long can a growth-based economy remains sustainable? At what point, if at all? Will it be necessary to transition to a more stable economic model? Because the growth requires, you know, like a certain, you know, uh, like ventures, like and everything, you know, becomes like a form of like a resource. So I think she means that. Are okay. you able to see the question? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find the question. Okay. Uh, just in the chat box. Oh, I, I got it, I got it. Okay. Yes, uh, he asked, how long can a, a growth-based economy remain sustainable? At uh, what point, if at all, will it be necessary to transition to a more? Yeah, that's, 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 that's really, really great. That's the point. I can say, frankly, that that's the problem that China now faced, right? Because in the past times, we are more and more or more focused on how to make the people be rich, let's say, frankly. That's how to make the people to get money, to build their homes, to live a better life. But a lot of things that you can't keep, always keep this kind of growth in, let's say, right? So, uh, yes, uh, I agree with you that we need to make another uh, solution to to say if we can uh, living a life without uh, let's say highly uh, highly highly increasing of the economy. I think the same is also happened in uh, the, in India now because India the economy is really really great, growing so good these years. Maybe uh, I think uh, let us the designers maybe we can do some. Uh, solutions, uh, advanced research, right? To to say maybe uh, in ten years or in five years, for the, mostly the India, there are people are living a very good life. And what can we do to leading them to um, uh, to promote the country to make a more sustainable way? That's the thing we are thinking. We Chinese people, especially the professors in China, are just thinking. But uh, for me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm so sorry because it's not depends on me. I can just uh, say, yeah, uh, it's uh, good to have another option when we face that kind of uh, situation because the situation comes, uh, I think, finally, because uh, it's a globally uh, world, right? Everybody got a chance to live, to, to make the, let's say, make their own economy uh, grow uh, better and better. So, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, any more questions from anyone? Yeah, so uh, we would like to thank you uh, like, so much, uh, Professor Han, uh, for joining our session and uh, having this interaction with our students. And uh, yes, uh, from sustainability perspective, uh, like uh, we have, you know, like a number of courses we are also trying to uh, sensitize, you know, our students and our uh, like a fraternity, and do some, you know, like a locality or you know, like a, a regional, you know, issues based, uh, like you know, projects as a part of our academic work. And uh, well, that the course is uh, under progress right now, and uh, hopefully in some time in a month's time we will be able to close in terms of like a project delivery and everything. So maybe some some other time we will have a you know exhibition with you also. We will show you like what we are doing in this. Uh, with this batch, right? So, yeah, we would like uh, really thank you so much for joining and giving us uh, your precious time. Yeah. Any word of suggestion you would like to give to our students? Uh, I think I, I talked too, talk too much this, this evening. And uh, there's something I want to share. It's good news that today is my birthday of my 70, blah, blah. I don't want to say <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, it's really great and my great pleasure to doing this sharing in my birthday. And I really, really hope uh, we can get more chance and more willingness to communicate with each other because we are laborers. We are really have a similar thinking ways and we can, I believe we can gain more things uh, with our collaboration. And I really I know that the students and the professors of IIT was the best of the best in India. So please, uh, just uh, share me something of your design in the future. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. So on for behalf the of all our students and my institute, uh, we will uh, we wish you a very happy birthday and uh, a very good day. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank so, so see you, maybe we, we got a chance to see you, okay? Yeah, sure. So, so I'm leaving now or? Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Bye, bye sir. Bye.
Bye, bye, Pisa. How do you say goodbye in India? In India? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, the same, like this. Yes, I mean, how to say? say bye. Goodbye. Bye, goodbye. The okay. same way I, as we say in English, like the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Say Goodbye. Say yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm going. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining.